We have a beautiful Rashi Sicha that's going to dissect one Rashi with three explanations, explain to us why they're all necessary, explain to us the, uh, the nuances in the choices of words and proofs that Rashi uses, sort of like the old-fashioned Rashi Sichas, that we learned together in the past. Seif Aleph. In Pasik Ovi Hishpiani Lamer, this is Yesef Atzadik talking to Paroi, convincing Paroi that he has to take his father to Eretz Kenan and bury him there. She says, Ovi Hishpiani Lamer, my father made me promise. Bikivri Asher Karisili, you will bury me in the burial plot, Asher Karisili, which we'll see in a moment what that means. Beretz Kenan, in the land of Kenan, Shama Sikpireni, there you will bury me. So Rashi quotes the words, Asher Karisili, from the Pasik, and brings three Pirushim and brings three Pirushim. Aleph Kipshute, first Pirush is, in the most literal sense, Vechulu Gigrobin, which means dug, Asher Karisili, that I dug for myself. I want you to bury me in my burial plot that I dug for myself. Beis umedrashay oid misyashiv ala loshen, and there's a second pirush which is a medrash, but oid misyashiv al loshen. It uh, also fits into the text. Kemoi asher kanisi is as if the pasuk would have said which I purchased. So Bikivri Asher Karisili means in my burial plot, which I purchased for myself in the land of Canaan. And this, as we'll see uh, uh, in the Sikha, but without even going into it, it flows into the words, Bikivri Asher Karisili, in my burial plot, which I purchased for myself. The Oid Medrashay, and there's another Medrash, a third Pirush, Lashen Kri Dagur, that Karisi comes from the word Kri, which means a pile or a mound. Shenotol Yaakov Kolkesef Ezov. Yaakov took all the gold and silver that he amassed in the house of Lavan. The Oso Oisoi Kri, and he piled it up. He made it into a mound. The Omar Leesov Toilze, and said to Esav, "Take this entire mound, this entire pile of money, for the spot in the Maoras Machpela that Yaakov wanted to be buried in." Now, when we get to the, to the continuation of the Sikha, we're going to focus on why we need three different explanations. But before that, the Rebbe is going to explain to us why Rashi lays it out in this specific order. The reason that Rashi lays out these three explanations in this order is move on. is understood very simply. They're not... First, he brings the most basic, simple explanation, which I dug for myself. Then he brings a medrish, something that is more further away from the simple meaning, but still it fits into the text of the Pasik. Asher Karisili Vas Ichab Gekait Farzik. The Pasik says Asher Karisili, which we would translate according to the second Pirush, which is a drash, which is a little bit more of expounding on the actual meaning of the word, but nevertheless it fits into the word words which I purchased for myself. Unochdem, and then thirdly, and Medrish was his nit misyashiv al aloshin, a pirish which is a drash, it's further away from the literal understanding, and it isn't doesn't even fit into the text. But late in derech abshat, late zichnit as asher karisi li aloshin kri, because if you read it according to pshat, it doesn't seem to fit to say that asher karisi li comes from the word kri, which means pile. Think about it. Asher karisi li is being said as a verb. I did something. Kri is a noun. It's a, a, a pile. Asher karisi li, which, I, I, which I, 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 I made a pile for myself. It doesn't really, obviously, uh, as a medrash, it's referring to the pile that Yaakov made. But it doesn't fit into the flow of the words. 
and therefore it is even further away from Pshat, and therefore it comes third. In the brackets, the Rebbe suggests that possibly the third Pirush is not a, a third Pirush, but it is an explanation of the second Pirush, and then certainly it's understood why it comes where it comes. As their Pirush Ve'oid Medrash Elosh and Kri is Nidkim Bazun Der Pirush Norah Ve'oid, and this is even more understood if we learn it, if we understand that this third Pirush of Ve'oid Medrash is not a third uh, explanation, rather it's a Ve'oid, it's an addition. A Tois Ves Tam Vaz Bara Af and Medrash Chulu Hamis Yashiv Af and Sveitin Pirush. It is an explanation and an expansion on the second Pirush, which did fit into the words. Asher Karisi, Kimoy Asher Karisi, which actually explained that Asher Karisi means as if it would have said, which I bought. Ados was Teirah Zogda Dem Loshen Karisi, that the fact that the Teirah says the word, I bought, by using the word Karisi, or Nitki Ragel Karnisi, or Der Lakachti, and not use the more common expression of Karnisi, I bought, or Lakachti, I bought, is Valdo, is Negead Loshen Kri, because we want to specifically use the, the term Kri, um, thus, as Miram is as their Kenyan is given in a Nevin was Karisi, not all Yaakov Kolkasev is of, because this hints, this indicates to the fact that Yaakov, uh, the way he purchased this was by doing it in a manner of Karisi, that he took all of his gold and silver and he bought this plot. So then certainly this order fits. First you have the Pshat, then you have the Medrish, and then you have the explanation of the Medrish. The Medrish is that he bought it. Then you have after that an explanation. How did he buy it? He bought it by making a mound of all of the money that he had. So the Seder, the order in which Rashi uh, uh, structures these three or these two explanations is understood. Medafer B'Fashtein, the Rebbe has a series of questions here. First, we're going to have three questions in the Pshat of Rashi, and then another qu a series of questions in the Loshen, in the wording that Rashi uses. Let's take one at a time. Aleph, Farvos, Banugin, Zich, Nidrashe, Mitten, Pirish, Kipshute, Umbrek, Tetzveten, Pirish, Leit, Medrashe. Why does Rashi not suffice? with the first Pirush, which is the Pirush HaPashot, the simple explanation. Why does Rashi feel the need, the necessity to bring another Pirush, especially since it's, it's, it's only a Medrash. It's only a, a, uh, a, another, it's another Pirush that's further away from Shat. When Abe the Eid Medrash is a Dritter Pirush, and if we learn that the Eid Medrash is a third Pirush, that would mean that Rashi does not either suffice with a medrash that at least fits into the text. But he, Rashi brings a third explanation that is even further from Pshat. What makes it further from Pshat? The fact that it does not fit into the text. And Rashi brings a third Pirush. So why does Rashi bring the second Pirush? And then why does Rashi bring a third Pirush? That's question number one. Base question number two. For what is that Sveter Pirush as a Sher Karisi is Kimoya Sher Karisi Medrashi? The second Pirush of Rashi. That a Sher Karisi means that which I bought, which I purchased. Why does Rashi call it Medrashi? That it's not a pirush apostle, it's not a simple, it's not a simple understanding, but it is a drash. We find other psukim that use a word that comes from the same shayrish, from the same source, from the same root as kira, as karisi, and they mean bot. In Parashas Dvarim, in Parashas Dvarim, there's a pasuk, Mayim Tichru, Ma'itam Bakesef, you should buy water from them with money. But Rashi is that Mefarish Tichru Loshen Mekach, which Rashi explains that Tichru means from the expression of Mekach, of buying. When Azayich in Heisheya, similarly in the Sefer Heisheya, Va'echreli, Ba'chamisha Asar Kesef, I will buy this with 15 silver pieces. But Rashi far taijd, Adas is Loshen Shechera. Rashi explains, this is the Loshen of doing business. So we see two psukim in Torah Shevik Sav that use a word from the same shayrish as the word kira and it means to purchase. So if it, it, if it could mean purchase over there, why can't it mean it over here and fit into the Pasuk? Noch the question is even stronger. Indeed, Beide Etra Nalvurashi, Mr. Farish and Pashtas, 
in the two above mentioned places, Bayim Tichru and Ve'echreli, where Rashi explains that it means literally bought. That means that Rashi uses the, the term, uh, the explanation bought as the as the literal, as the simple explanation. Now we bow the zoknit as does it like Medrashi, because as we see that Rashi doesn't call it Medrashi, so obviously Rashi is learning it lefi pshutoi. Bring to the raya dav kifun unzer pasuk asher karizili. Rashi proves over there. How does he know that over there it means to buy? From our Pasuk, Asher Karisili, Vuazak, that does his Medrashi, and in our Pasuk, he calls it Medrashi. So how does that work? First of all, Bechlau, why is Rashi calling it Medrashi? And if he is, how could he teach it in other places, Lifi Pshute, and learn it from here, where here he's calling it Medrashi? Gimel. Third, ex- third question. Even if these psukim do not work for some reason, to prove that karisi means purchasing, doing business. But Rashi, which we haven't quoted yet in the Sikha, but Rashi says, when after he says that karisi comes from the expression of kanisi, uh, means like, as if it would say kanisi, I bought, Rashi adds, Omar Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva said, when I went to the cities by the sea, I heard that they use for the word mechira, which means set to sell, I heard they, they use the word kira. So we see that kira is connected to the to the idea of a transaction. So even if the psukim did not work, but we have a proof from Rabbi Kiva's journey to the krache ayam, to the cities by the sea, that kira could be translated a transaction. Is Dr. Snitkin drash? No pshudishal mikra. So it's not a drash. It's the simple meaning. And the Rebbe is going to bring two rayas, two proofs, where we see that Rashi teaches a word based on how this word is used in other places, in other languages. And nevertheless, Rashi refers to it in those, in those places as pshutai. If you make a fint is freer, first of all, you find earlier when Yaakov Avinu bought the, a piece of land near Shechem, Bemeya Ksita, and from possibly make Ksita Zak Drashi, Ksita Ma. Ksita is a kind of currency. It's a coin called a Ma. Omer Rebbe Kiva Kishalakti the Krach Yayam. How you can in the Ma Ksita, as Rebbe Kiva said, when I went to the cities by the sea, they would call a Ma, they would call it Sita. And that's how Rashi knows that Meya Ksita means, means a hundred Ma. When there's something that is pure, it's like Medrashi. And Rashi doesn't call it Medrashi. The very fact that the Krach Yayam, it's called Ksita, that's enough. When Isaiah writes in Parshas Boy and Parshas Vayischan, and similarly in in the future in Parshas Boy and in Parshas Vayischan, is Rashi Mefarish from word Teitafis. Rashi translates the word Teitafis, which is referring to the four compartments in the Tfilin Shalreish and the Head Tfilin. So Rashi says Tat ve Katvi Shtayim. The word Tat in the language spoken in Katvi means two. Tat Pas ba Afriki Shtayim, and the word Fat Fas. In the language spoken in Afriki, it also means two, and therefore Tetafis means four. When Zoknita does a Medrashi, and again Rashi does not refer to it as Medrashi. That when the fun from the, from this we derive, as he bowed his die, Chacha, Fan Uptight, Fan Avart, and Tera, Fan Alash, and Krachi Ayam, since there is a proof that a word in Tera is, is used in the cities by the sea, other in Katfi or in the play, or different places. Jesus late finished Rashi Uzgalton Derechapshat, and Rashi uses that translation uh, to fit in to the way of Pshat. And for Vos Rufta Rashi, Da on Midrashi. So why here, where also you have a word, Kira, that is used to mean transaction in Krache Ayam, in the cities by the sea, why all of a sudden now is it Midrashi? So, so this is basically really two bays and gimel are two intertwined questions. The question is, why is Rashi calling the second taich? That, that Asher Karisi means that I bought it. Why is Rashi referring to it as Medrashi? Either you have Psukim, Mayim Tichru, and Vahechreli Bechamishim Elsar Kelsev that imply that this word Kira means to buy in Psute Shel Mikra. Or if those psukim don't work, you have the, the, the language used, ayam, that, the, that kira means, or karisi means purchase, or, 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 to, or to make a transaction with. And 
why is that not enough for us in this Pasik to refer to this translation as Medrashe? As Psute, sorry. Why is it not Psute? Why does Rashi call it Medrashe? Siv Beis, the Rebbe is going to ask five questions in the Lushan of Rashi, in, in, in the nuances within the wording that Rashi chooses to use. <coughs> In Lash and Rashi Gufa, we have to also understand the specific nuances in the words of Rashi. Allah of us is there, my taking them. Dibra Maskal, Echdivet Rasher, Li, Erez Dach Lechem, and Farash Nader. What could you see? Question number one Rashi seemingly up until here, his intent is to translate the word Karisi. Either it means that I dug, or it means that I bought, or it means that I bought by making a pile of money. But he's translating the word karisi. So why in the Dibara Maschil, in the words that he quotes from the Pasik, does he say asher karisi li? Why does he add the word asher and li in the Dibara Maschil? Base question number two. Avanashtan Pirush bring Rashi Araya Kemoy Kiyichraish. Rashi, when he says asher karisi, then it means kipsutoi, I dug. Rashi brings a proof that yichra, that karisi means dug, from the Pasik in Parsus Mishpatim by the Dean of Boyer. Of someone who dug a pit in the Shusrab in the public domain, the Pasik says, Ki yichre ish, if a person will dig a pit. So it's not understood, Aleph. Why does Rashi not bring a raya, a proof, from an earlier Pasik where it says that the servants of Yitzchak dug a well? So we see that the word, the word, the word kira means digging. Base a second part of this question. Farvos is Rashi Maitik Oich the word Kiyichra Ish. Why does Rashi include the word Ish in his proof? Was Gitnitsu in Asbara Saraya, which seemingly does not add anything to explaining this proof? Mimonavshach. Whatever perspective you come from, it, do, it, it doesn't get answered. If the adds the word ish to indicate which pasuk he's referring to, is it native the word ish? The word ish is unnecessary. This is the only pasuk in the entire chumash where it says kiyichra. So you don't need the word ish by saying kiyichra. You know which pasuk he's referring to. And if he wants to tell, explain to us that kriya over there means to dig. Is it masking the word ish? The word ish itself doesn't suffice. When I vote give daft echar obring in the word boy shalachrisa, you should have included the word boy. If it said kiyichra boy, the boy needs to be dug. So the fact that it says boy, you know that kiyichra means to dig. But if it just says kiyichra ish without the word boy, it doesn't add any explanation to the word kiyichra, nor does it help us understand which pasuk it is because there's no pasuk kiyichra besides for this one. So the question is, why, why does Rashi use the Pasuk Kiyichra? And why does he add the word Ish? Question Gimel, the third question. Now in Satan, Peter Zogd Rashi, Kamoi Asher Karisi. The Pasuk says, Asher Karisi Li. So Rashi says, it's, it's as if it would say in the Pasuk, Asher Karisi, which I have purchased. The Chayr is, Maman of Shach, again we have a question that D- that regardless which perspective you're coming from, we're, we're left with the question. If Rashi is here to translate the word Karisi, then all we need is the word Karisi, not Asher Karisi, Karisi, Kemoi Karisi. Karisi is like I bought. And if Rashi is trying to imitate the, the structure of the Pasik, to be consistent with the way the Pasik is structured, where it says Asher and Li, Asher Karisi Li, Hotar Echidav Meisas and the word Li, Kamai Asher Karisi Li, then I should have added the word Li. Either take out the word Asher or add the word Li, Asher Karisi Li. So that's the third question. Question number one, why the Dibra Maschil says Asher Karisi Li? Question number two, why does Rashi use the Pasek Yichre? And why does he add the word Ish? Question three, why does Rashi say Kemoi Asher Karnisi and not either Kemoi Karnisi or Kemoi Asher Karnisi Li? Dalit. Question four. For us, bring Rashi Araya as Karnisi is Kemoi Asher Karnisi from them, was Omer Rabbi Akiva Keshaw Lachti Chulu or Nit from Peferi Shepsukim. We mentioned earlier that there's two psukim 
that, that the one in Parshas Dvarim and one in Sefer Reshaya, where we see that the word the words with the with the with the root kira mean to purchase. Nevertheless, Rashi there brings a raya from the from the fact that the Bakiva, when he went to Krachayam, they refer they referred to Mechira as Kira. So the question is why does Rashi go straight to a teaching of the sages and not use the Psukim as a raya? Can now see if Aleph Kushya base, as was mentioned earlier in Seif Aleph, these two Psukim of Mayim Tichru Bakasev and Vaechrali Khamisha Sarkasev. The, in the Mashtan Pirush, as Rashi does in his first Pirush, where he brings the Pasik Yichra Ish, which is a Pasik, not a Maim Chazal. So, why in the second Pirush does Rashi not use the Psukim and instead use the a teaching of Rabbi Akiva? Sif hey, question hey, I'm sorry. And question five a, expands on question four. Even if for some reason the psukim themselves don't work as a proof, when the river was Rashi on coming to the raya from the Chazal, the Rashi has to has to use a raya from the words of Chazal from Rabbi Akiva, who explained that that that, that he knows from the Krachei Ayam that Mechira is called Kira. It's still difficult to understand. Why Rashi has to bring the details. When I went to the cities by the sea, they would call Mechira Kira. When I zopped in Bekitzer, why couldn't Rashi say it much more concisely? That Karisi is as if it would say Asher Karnisi. The Mechira Nikra Kira, because we know that Mechira is called Kira. Kidisa Be Rajashana, like the Gemara says in Besach Te Rajashana. Vikayetsa Beza, or something similar to that. Without going into the fact that the Makiva traveled to Krachi Ayam, and over there, that's where he heard Mechira being called Kira. So that's our fifth question. So, question number three is why does Rashi not use the Psukim as a Raya? Question number, sorry, question number four is why does Rashi not use the Psukim as a Raya? Question number five is if is even if Rashi does need to use Rebbe Akiva as a Raya, why does he have to mention the various different details of how we came to the conclusion that Mechir is called Kira? In Sif Gimel, the Rebbe is going to begin the beer, and the Rebbe is going to tell us that Rashi here is not just coming to touch the word Karisi. As we said, then it would say just Karisi in the Dibra Maschil. Rashi has a, a deeper uh, uh, goal here, and that is to explain in general why the Psukim, why the Pasik has to say the words Asher Karisi Lin to begin with. It could have just said Bikivri in my burial plot. Bikivri Asher Beretz Kinan. I have a burial plot in Eretz Kinan. Shama Sikbarini, that's where I want to be buried. The fact that it says Asher Karisi Li means that, that, that Yosef was, Yaakov was telling Yosef, and Yosef was telling Paroi, a deeper connection that Yaakov has to this burial plot, which is why Paroi must be convinced that Yaakov must be buried in the land of Canaan. That is, and, and, and these three explanations, these two or three explanations in Rashi, are, 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 are explanations, not just of the word Karisi, but why or how we see the deep connection that Yaakov has to, these, to, to this burial plot, which, which is why it's so necessary for him to go to Eretz Yisrael. Their beer b'chazeh. Rashi is oisin nit nartz mefaraz and the word karisi. Rashi is not here just to ta- translate the word karisi. Rashi is coming to answer why, to begin with, is it necessary to have these words? It should have sufficed for the pasuk to say in my burial plot that is in the land of Canaan, there I should be buried. But in Russian Bikivri in mine caver by saying in my burial plot, already explains the fact that Yaakov wants to be buried there. It's my it's, it's my burial plot. And therefore I want to be buried there. Muzman Zagan, therefore, from the fact that the Pasik says extra words, Asher Karisili, we must conclude, as Mitn Sugeb and Asher Karisili, but by adding these words, Yosef is intending to speak something unique about the connection between this burial plot to Yaakov. Which is, which is why it is very important to him. Which is why he commanded Yosef, this is where I want to be buried. Both Yaakov and Yosef knew that Pari wants Yaakov to be buried in Mitzrayim. As, we, as she brings 
in, in, in the beginning of the parsha that, that they knew Pari knew that Yaakov brought bracha to Mitzrayim, and therefore he wanted him to be buried there. But the Dibur of Yaakov need for lost of the Yosef and Nechi Asak it which is why Yaakov did not rely on Yosef's word. I will do as you requested. And he instead he administered an oath to Yosef. The first one is an imazvez. The first one explain there's a darmit gufekin and pale enough pare that with this fact that he made an oath, with this he will be able to convince pare. As Rashi brings that he told pare that if you make me renege on my promise to my father, then I will also renege on my promise to you. When I promised you that I will never tell anyone that you don't know the seventy first language, the language of lashon hakodesh. So the promise. It wasn't just something that Yaakov did, that Yosef did. It was actually, it wasn't just to make it stronger. It was actually a tool with which to convince Pari that he must let him go to Eretz Kinan. Which is why Yosef says to Pari, my father made me promise. To convey to Pari how important this was to Yaakov. Is move on. So therefore, Yosef also says the reason Asher Karisili was only scabbled and eich by Paray, which will also be acceptable to Paray. Farvasi zimazoy negeya as is on Nikber Beranetz Kenan. Yaakov is telling Yosef the reason why this place or how you see that this place is so important to him, so that way he can convey this to Paray, and Paray will be convinced that Yaakov must be buried in in, in, in Eretz Kenan. So this is the nekuda. This is the 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 the, uh, the the answer to all the questions, or the, at least the nutshell of it. That Asher Karisi Li Rashi is here to explain to us what is this unique connection that Yaakov has with this burial plot, with uh, with, with, with which Yosef is going to convince Paroi that he must go to Eretz Canaan and bury his father there. Therefore, Rashi brings the first Pirush Kipshute. The, the literal. As a Kirisi meant Kigrabin, that it means dug. When we bowed, it says, Since this is a burial plot that Yaakov himself worked so hard to open up, to dig up. So, with this, it makes it, it, makes it understood that this clearly was very important to him. Their meat is moving for us. Rashi brings the Raya Davki from Pasuk Yichra, and with this, it will also explain why Rashi uses the Pasuk Yichra. When is Dor Eich Matik the word Ish, and includes the word Ish from the word from them was the Pasuk that Dor makes of the word Ish. Since in that Pasuk, the Pasuk says Ish, Un Zok Nistam Oik Yichra Boy, and doesn't say or he will dig a pit. Keep in mind that the Pasuk starts Ki Yiftach Ish Boy Oik Yichra Ish Boy. The, the fact that the Pasik says the word Ish again. By the way, unrelated to this, to this Rashi. Over there, in Mishpatim, the fact that the Pasik uses the word Ish by talking, when talking about digging a, a, a pit is mashma, from this it's understood, as ki yichre is a zach was a mensch leg derin a rein speciella tircha vishtados von a Ish erwachsene mensch. It, 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 it tell, lets us know, it, it, it implies to us that Kiyichra is a term that refers to an extra effort in the digging, something that requires a man, an adult, for it. And the Ara, the Rebbe brings two, refers to two Rashis. One is, Mi Samcha Ish, who made you into an Ish? This is the, in the Mitzrayim talking to Moshe Rabbeinu. So Rashi says, Vihine Oid Chanar, you're still a child. Or, uh, in 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 uh, Noyach it says Isha Adama, man of the earth, and Rashi says Adonai Adama, the master of the earth. The word Ish refers to somebody that is older, and refers to somebody that is that 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 is in control, that is a master. So the fact that the pasuk over here uses the word Ish is telling us that it's a very a difficult digging, a kind of digging that necessitates an Ish. Is there fun move on eich benitn di dan? So now that we established that over there the word ki yichre means di- means a difficult digging, and we know that from the fact that it has the word ish, 
So we can now apply that to our case as a yester karisi is given for bunten with the tircham yuchedus on Yaakov. When as Yaakov says asher karisi, it was it it, it, it uh, necessitated an extra effort, extra toil on the part of Yaakov. Ruf des bemeila haris a gefil from grace chshivus. This highlights a feeling of great importance. So therefore, as you use the pasuk ki yichra. To emphasize that this was something that was very important to Yaakov, that he put a lot of work into it. So this answers two questions. Question number one: Why Rashi says in the Dibra Maschil Asher Karisi Li? Because that's what's bothering Rashi. Why the pasuk includes all these three words? And it also answers our second question: Why Rashi uses the pasuk Ki Yichra and why he adds the word Ish? Because specifically, kiyichra means that it was a difficult digging, which emphasizes the point that this was something very special to Yaakov Avinu. Now we're going to explain why Rashi brings a second pirush. And the reason why Rashi brings a second pirush is because this pirush has a number of questions on it. Sif Dalet. Then pirush and Ferenc Verikait and Umayhem. This question, this explanation that, that, that Kardisi means I dug, has a couple of difficulties. Aleph and Teichen in the in the concept. Ma'aras Machpelah is in Eretz Yisrael. The Maras Machpelah, as we know, is in the city of Chevron, which is in Eretz Yisrael. When Yaakov is the last to zibitz in Yarfon, and Levin given in Mitzrayim, Yaakov spent the last seventeen years of his life in Mitzrayim. But the Fizah had Yaakov dem kever gegraben mit iber zibitz in Yarfri or far as I'm particular, which would mean that Yaakov dug this grave more than seventeen years ago, more than seventeen years before he passed away. Azach was late zich netaf and seichel. Which is not so so understandable. Why would Yaakov wake up one day uh, when he's so young, relatively speaking? Yitzchak passed away at 180. Yaakov passed away at 175. Sorry, Avram passed away at 175. Yaakov wasn't even 130 years old before he went to Mitzrayim. So why would he uh, go all of a sudden and and start digging a caver base of us Karisi? Yaakov Alein, why I dug? Why did Yaakov dig? Why couldn't Yaakov ask someone to dig for him? Hire someone to dig for him? This question might be answered by the fact that the word Karisi, I dug, doesn't have to mean literally I did it. It could mean I had it done through my people. But still, Alpipastus, Karisi means I dug. Why would Yaakov be digging his own grave? Another question, this time is not in the concept, but in the in the text. Late then, Pirush is the word li in Lechere Ibrik. The Pasik says, Asher Karisi li. If Asher Karisi means I dug, then the word li is superfluous. As the Kenstein Asher Karisi could have said that I dug it. And it would be self understood that it was for me. Who else would Yaakov be digging? Bikivri. He says, in my burial plot, Asher Karisi that I dug, of course it was for me. So because of these questions, both in the idea that Yaakov would dig his own grave so early on, and two, that the Pasek has the word Li that seems to be superfluous, that even bring Rashi at Svetan Pirush, therefore Rashi brings a second Pirush. And there's, it's, it's, this paragraph is a little wordy, so work with me through it. And um, in Sif Hei, the Rebbe is going to explain the second Pirush. This is the quote from the Rashi. So first of all, Rashi says, Medrashay. This is a Medrash, it's not Pshat. As we will explain in the Sicha, why not? Nevertheless, it does fit into the text of the Pasuk. Both the translation of the word karisi and the necessity of the word li will both fit according to this second pshat of Rashi. The fact that Rashi calls it medrashi, if it fits into the pasik, if it fits into the flow of the of the words, why is it called medrashi? Is nit mitzadam lashon akasov. Medrashi Rashi refers is not to the text. Which, as we said in a moment, Rashi says, "Misyashev aloshin." The text works, nor mitzat toichnoi kidul kaman. But the meaning of the of the of the way we understand this pshat, you, as we will see in the sicha, it, it doesn't fit uh, according to pshat, and therefore Rashi says umedrashi. Which, if you remember, this was one of the questions: Why does Rashi call it medrashi? So we will get to that. Most importantly, 
Es is madgish the chashivus hakeva vayakavin. This this second pshat will emphasize how important this kaver, this burial plot, was for Yaakov. What is the what is Rashi saying? As konisi nit yorashti. As as konisi, sorry, that konisi means I purchased it. Nit yorashti b'derachamela, not that I inherited it automatically. Or the lokachti b'to yerushef and avaysay, or I received it as an inheritance from. My ancestors, nor bat sold I paid for it. Will be declared freer, as has been said earlier on in Chumash. Bakniyas Avram with Moras Machpelah when Yaakov with Avram purchased the Moras Machpelah from Ephraim Achiti. The Alderech said Bakniyas Yaakov similarly when Yaakov bought the piece of land by near Shechem. He says Bekasef Mali. It was with uh, top dollar, e- either. That it was money that was uh, 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 it was it was it was a lot of money. It was good coins, coins that are accepted everywhere. Or the lashon churfan, the lashon that Rashi uses by by uh, by when Yaakov bought the land next to Shechem, churfan means a charifim v'chal mokim that they are acceptable coins that are used everywhere, implying that they both Avram and Yaakov paid a lot of money. And they used good coins, which means they invested a lot into the purchase. Also here, when Yaakov buys the, 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 this plot from Esav, I guess, when Yaakov buys it, he pays top dollar, implying how important it is for, to him. And in Sifei, the Rebbe is going to explain how we get to this, the, the, this meaning of Kanisi, and why it's called Medrashai, and how it fits into the words of the Pasuk. So first we have to understand the raya, the proof that Rashi brings. That Asher Karisi means Asher Karnisi. Rashi, Rashi's proof is from Nabakiva when he went to the uh, uh, cities by the sea, they used to call me the word Mechira, Kira. The Lechira is an eye lister. Seemingly this is a proof that negates the Rashi's point. Rashi will the touch Karisi Karisi Kaifin. Rashi wants to say that Karisi means I bought it. When the Bakiva is going to ask Kira to make Mechira Far Kaifin, and the Bakiva is saying that Kira means to sell. So what's Rashi bringing the Bakiva for? They're beer in them, but the answer is when the Maimer the Bakiva is okay to the Mechira Kira, meant Rashi to bring in Aichacha as Karisi meant Nitla Kachti Nemen Stam, nor Achilu from Shini Rishus. Rashi here is not translating the word kira to mean mechira, to mean buying, to mean selling. Rashi is here to prove that the word kira doesn't mean to take, to take for nothing. But it means a transactional exchange, a chiluf, an exchange, when shinri rishus, a change of ownership from the geld von lekeach, from the money that it was in the possession of the buyer, und the karka kever von moicher, and the, the earth, of the plot that was in the hands of the seller, other lehepech or vice versa, they're, they're, it, it's being exchanged. I'm buying something from you. I'm giving you money. You're giving me something in exchange. When that happens, we use the word kira. We can use the word kira. Kira means a transactional exchange. That's the diet from Rebakiv. Underfar. Can karisi mean in sai karisi and sai macharti? In that case, karisi could mean either I bought it or I sold it. When there is an exchange of money and and, and, and and something that's being bought for that money or sold for that money, I could use the word kira. So when it says asher karisi, asher karisi could mean either I bought it or I sold it. Under mitis verstandik vervas der pasik der madgizan karisi li. And if that's the case, we now understand why the pasik adds the word li. Because since the word karisi doesn't mean necessarily I bought it, it means the 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 ownership was exchanged. After pasuk meisiv zayin as their karisi dem keder is given li. So therefore, the pasuk has to say that in this case karisi means for me. That says karisi, which means I bought it. If I sold it, it was for the other person. If I bought it, it's for me. So the, the, the word li is telling us how to contextualize karisi, that karisi means I bought it. So this gives us 
a new understanding. Uh, um, in, in the next paragraph, we're going to say that this is why Rashi brings uh, the Bakiva as the Raya and not the Psukim. But before that, in the brackets, the Rebbe is going to answer question Gimel. Question Gimel was, why does Rashi say Asher Kanisi and not Asher, uh, not Asher Kanisi Li? Either he should say Kanisi or Asher Kanisi Li. Mashenkin in Pirish Rashi, Vasar Banuts Dich mit Noshen Kanisi, is Iberik to Tzuleg in the word Li. But now it's understood that Rashi, who translates Kanisi into Kanisi, now the word Li is totally superfluous in Rashi. In the Pasig where it says Kanisi, in order for me to know what Kanisi means, I needed to say Kanisi Li. But in Rashi, where Rashi is not using the word Kardisi, he's using the word Kanisi, I bought, the word Li, the word li is, is extra. So Rashi is trying to stay consistent with the structure of the Pasuk, which is why he adds the word Asher, Asher Kanisi. But Rashi has, has no reason to say Li, because once you say Kanisi, you already know, you already know for whom it is. And therefore Rashi doesn't say the word Li. So that was the answer to question Gimel. Question Dalit was, why... Rashi uses, why Rashi does not use the Psukim as a Raya? When the fire can Rashi need bring in the Raya from the Psukim, now that we understand that Rashi is, is, is using Rabbi Akiva, because Rabbi Akiva is telling us that Kira means a transaction, and Karisi Li means that I bought it, and the word Li helps me understand what Karisi means. Now I understand why I can't use the Psukim, Malfun Dort, and Voltnege can't touch the Raya Lister. Because from those psukim, they would have been, it would have been a contradictory proof. Since the pasuk adds the word with money, or with fifteen silver pieces, is mashmas kriya alain make nemen alain kriya alain make nemen This means that the word kriya could be understood to take without paying for it. In other words. Um, Rashi is bringing Rabbi Kida to teach us that Kriya does not mean to take, that it means to, 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 to exchange money for something. So now, if you look at these other psukim, if it would say, it could, it could have just said, Mayim Tichru Meita. By saying Mayim Ba Kesef Tichru, that means that there could be a Tichru without Kesef. That means that Tichru could mean to take without paying. Then that would be an opposite proof. The whole proof that Rashi is trying to bring is that Tichru means to, to, is to, is to have to pay for it. To have to uh, make an exchange of money for something. Those Tzukim make the opposite point. By adding the word Bakesef, it implies that there could be a Tichru without Kesef. Which means that Tichru by itself would mean to take. Rashi wants to specifically make the opposite point. That Tichru means to exchange. And therefore Rashi cannot use those Tzukim. And therefore Rashi uses the, 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 the teaching of Rabbi Kiva that Mechira means Kira. What has not yet been answered is question hey, which is even if you're going to use Rabbi Akiva, why bring up the Krache Ayam? Why do we have to know where Rabbi Akiva discovered this? And that's going to be answered in question Vav by saying that we still have, have we, we still might ask a question on this period of Rashi. If Rashi didn't tell us anything about the Krache Ayam, Rashi just said that Asher Karisi Li means Asher Karnisi, that I made an exchange and I, I, and I paid money and I bought this, this, this lot, this plot. The fees of life to be sure we still have a question. The Kasha are now the same question that we asked in the beginning of Sif Gimel. Why is it necessary to tell us that this is the caver that I bought, Asher Kanisi, that it's mine through buying it? What kind of importance is lies? In this caver, from the fact that I bought it, that this will convince Paroi that he should allow Yaakov to bury to Yaakov, to allow Yosef to bury Yaakov there. For lozen zich as he bald me gefin pat zwei knies from the office as they zanen given for gar graces chumim and to rely that the previous two purchases of the office the miyaretz machpele by Avram and the 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 chelkas asoda near Shechem that Yaakov bought were bought for huge sums. But party zicher visen der fun and verstehen as ich die knies gave me for because and from this party will deduce that also this purchase was for a lot of money and therefore the amount 
will will give the message to Pari that this is important to Yaakov. Is that Deicha Gadol is very difficult to say. The Pari will know what the previous Avais did or the previous purchases were, and therefore he'll figure out that this was an important purchase. All we know here is a Sharkarisili. I paid for it. By, 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 by buying it, how does that convey to Paroi the importance of this purchase? Question base. Another question that we have on this Pirush. If Rashi doesn't bring in the Krach Yayam, why does, why does the Pasik use the term Kira? Which means an exchange of ownership. And because of that, the Pasik has to add the word li. So the pasuk could have written a very clear expression, konisi, kachti, and other expressions, I purchased it. And there would be no need to add li. If karisi simply means I purchased, then why not say konisi? S- does not rely on just bringing the general meaning. As mechira v'dan gruf and kira, the mechira could be called kira. Nor eichas bekrache ayama yukein lemechira kira. Rather, Rashi brings the fact that it was referred to this in the krache ayam in the cities by the sea. Krachim zayin grace mischeshtet. Krachim means means big cities where 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 a lot of business, a lot of commerce is done. Especially if it's on the on, on the on the sea, it's it, it's 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 the cities. Of import export, where things are brought from other places, so a lot of business is done there. Where business and commerce is is done in a big city level, big city style. And this is what the Pasuk means when it says, not just I bought. Yosef wanted to convey the great importance of this kever by Yaakov. That he made the effort that this purchase should be on a level of Karisi, a starker Kenyan, that it should be a very firm, strong uh, a transaction as it's done in the cities of business. Um, so now, by Rashi saying "krache ayam," Rashi is indicating to us that ye, it wasn't just a it wasn't just a purchase; it was a very firm, strong purchase. Um, and this answers the question why Rashi has to mention "krache ayam" because it's giving us a much deeper understanding into what type of purchase it was, which which that way answers the question better, why is this, how do we know that this kever is so important to Yaakov? Now we answer why Rashi calls him a drashay. Which means to say, in the words, Asher Karisi Li, it fits in beautifully. Asher Karisi Li, which I purchased for myself. And it has to say Li, because Karisi could have meant I sold. So therefore by saying Li, I know that it means purchased. But nevertheless, Rashi still refers to it as Medrashi. Well, their Indian as their Kenyan from Krache Yam with Unguru from Kira. This idea that it, when it's a, a purchase, uh, 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 that the kind that's done in Krache Yam in the cities by the by, in the cities by the sea is called Kira. Umba vice of a Kenyan which which uh, uh, represents a more. Uh, uh, important transaction. And with that, that Yosef was trying to convince Pare the necessity of burying Yosef Yaakov in, in Eretz Yisrael. That is not is not necessary. Is not uh, 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 compelling according to Pesut Shemikra. Therefore, as he calls it Rashi. The fact that he bought it, that, that could have been Pshutishal Mikra, which is why Tichru and Vaechre is Pshutishal Mikra. Because, because to say that Karisi means I bought, that works according to Pshutishal Mikra. But in this case, Rashi is telling us something more than that. Rashi is telling us that there was a king in Chashuv, uh, similar to what's done in Krachi Ayam. That already is not Pshat, and therefore Rashi calls it Madrash. So this answers, uh, answer are, are, are the, the other two, the last two questions, Dalad and Hay of Seif Beis, why does Rashi not use the Psukim? Because over there, Tichru and the Echra, uh, we don't know for sure that it means to purchase 
uh, uh, the, the word kira itself means to buy, because over there the psukim added the word bakesef. And why does uh, and, and why does Rashi elaborate? I uh, mentioned in Krachayayam to emphasize that this was a kinyan chashuv. This was a very a major transaction, which emphasizes the the, the chashivus, the importance of this kaver. But we have to uh, uh, we have to still answer is why Rashi brings. Another pirush on top of this. Why Rashi brings a third explanation or the expansion of the second explanation, depending on how you learn it. And that's going to explain going to be explained in Siv Zayin that the pirush is a bishvermit at Mtech and Adibur from Ashar Karisili. This pirush still leaves us with a question. The fact that Yaakov bought this, even though it was a, this was an important transaction, a major transaction, still does not express the the the, the, the great effort that Yaakov invested to receive this kaver. Therefore, we don't see the importance of it. Anything that's important, you buy it with a major transaction. So why does this? Why the, why does this emphasize? The fact that Yaakov bought it, even with the Kinyu Chashuv, why? How does this emphasize the importance of the Kaver? The Rebbe that Rashi Meisiv Eid Medrash Yilash and Kri. Therefore, Rashi adds to this uh, another aspect of the Medrash that Karisi comes from the word Kri, which means a mound or a pile. Should not Yaakov call Kasev Azav Shavim Bislavan. Yaakov took all the gold and silver that he amassed in the house of Lavan, and he, with that he bought this plot. As the dust was the the pasuk grouped under the kinyan with the nomen karisi, is not nor to undate in the vashtarkin kinyan canal. That the word karisi is not just to indicate a major transaction. That the mitzvah of Tera Meram is the Tera is hinting as Yaakov would find them kever avegi gave him his ganze kesef zav shevi. Yaakov gave away all of his gold and silver. But that's why it's a vifol that is chaver v'yakov by Yaakov, and this shows how precious this was to Yaakov. Yaakov spent all of his money, everything that he amassed. Everything that he that, that he made, working for Lavan, he took all of it and he spent it on this caver. But Afilo Pari lived the master, and Pari realizes how much Yaakov invested in this. Even Yaakov Pari would agree, Ashamatik Bereni, that he should be buried over there. So that's why Rashi has to add this word, the, the, the third pirush, to be able to explain um, how important this is to Yaakov Avinu that he spent all of his money on it. Of course, you can't just say this because this whole Lush and Kri is based on the fact that Asher Karisi means a purchase. So therefore you have to have um, um, both of these Pirushim. The Pirushim that were blazed are from Medrashay. Um, however, this is only Medrashay. When Nachmas is a field of Nitzvah Yashiv al it doesn't even fit into the text of the Pasik. As even the Pirush of Kamei Asher Karisi, like the previous explanation, that we, we fit it into the words. But to Zagan as Karisi is Lashon Kri, is in Gansan Inyan from Drash. Because the idea that Karisi means a pile, this is totally a Drash. Uh, the way the Pasik, Asher Karisi, which I, Karisi for myself, this does not uh, 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 translate as which I made a pile for myself. And therefore, it is totally a drash, and therefore Rashi says um, drash, doesn't even fit into the words. When we bow the pirushim, kmoyashar karisi, lash and kri, both of these pirushim, both that it means that I purchased, or the ones that it means that I made a pile and spent all my money, is medrashay, since both of them at the end of the day are not pshat. They are medrashe, the ribir is the pirush tradition, therefore Rashi brings the, uh, the first one first, because that is the primary one, kmoy kiyichre ish, that it means that Yaakov dug it. But the pirush is pshutay, because that pirush is the most simple pshat. Sayin lash na kosov, thus the pirush apashu from karisi. First of all, in, in, in the translation, the simple meaning of a karisi means that I dug. Sayin teichen na kosov, also in the, in, 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 in the context of the Pasik, that it means that I dug, this displays how precious and how important this was to Yaakov, and he was so, uh, um, he was so, uh, he put in so much effort into this, that he himself went and he dug it, Li, to leave them tzvek, even though we asked earlier, why does it say Li? But here the Rebbe sort of answers that question, that, that we're trying to emphasize the, the how important this is, is that Yaakov went and dug this caver for this very purpose, so he should be able to be buried there, which this is, which this, uh, 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 um, 
expresses the importance that this had to Yaakov, and therefore the first pirush is the one that it fits most with the pshat, sai with the meaning of digging, sai with the context that we're trying to explain how important this was to Yaakov. And with this we completed Chelek Tesvav of Lukut HaSichis, David says, Ahelfin, Kishem Shah, Zatani, Lesayim, just David has given us, assisted us to get to this point, to finish this entire Krach, so may he help us to complete many more Krach and many more volumes, many, many more volumes. Adein Niski B'mehed of Yameinu Mamesh, to be able to hear Teir HaDasha from the Rebbe himself, and to continue learning with the Rebbe and from the Rebbe, Begashmi Skipshutei Mamesh.